to the Word of God. We're turning this morning to the Epistle of James. And we're in the Epistle of James this morning, chapter 1, the Epistle of James, and we're in chapter 1. And it's from this opening few verses that the Lord wants to speak to us. And the Lord wants to speak to us this morning upon a very important subject, a subject this morning perhaps that may be fitting for you at this very moment. Verse 1 of James 1, we read, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Amen. And we know that the Lord will bless those verses to our hearts this morning. Throughout the sacred pages of Holy Scripture this morning, you'll come to places. You will come to places this morning in Holy Scripture where they will clearly encourage and clearly challenge us to what we would term a big ask. A big ask this morning that would run contrary and that would run against the course of our natural way of thinking. Think, for instance, of the Lord Jesus in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 44, where the Lord Jesus says, "'Love your enemies.'" And you know, child of God this morning, that's a big ask, isn't it? And that's something this morning, child of God, that would run against the natural way of thinking. Love your enemies. And then the Lord Jesus continues with a greater ask in that verse. He says, not only love your enemies, but then he continues. He says, bless them that curse you. And mind you, that's a big ask this morning, isn't it? Because it does take grace to love your enemies. It is possible, but it takes grace. And it takes grace this morning to bless them that curse you. And then the Lord Jesus continues with a greater ask, and He says, Do good unto them that hate you. And friend, if there's anything that runs across or runs against the natural course of thinking, of natural thinking, it's that this morning. Do good to them that hate you. Well, that's what the Lord Jesus commands us to do. And it takes grace. Then the Lord Jesus continues and He says, And pray for them, pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. Listen, child of God, these are commands. That the Lord Jesus give, in other words, that we would live properly for Him. Love your enemies, a big ask. Bless them that curse you, that's a big ask. Do good to them who, who, who despitefully use you and persecute you, that's a big ask. And then the Lord Jesus concludes with these words, that ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven. You see, child of God, even though Scriptures like this is a big ask, and yet they flow against the course of natural thinking, yet, friend, these are the very courses that are set for us that you and I could live victorious Christian 
lives. Are you living a victorious Christian life this morning, child of God? And not only a victorious Christian life, but a life that pleases God, not us, but a life that pleases God. This morning, the word that God has for us is another big ask in a different sense. Perhaps it's, it, it certainly runs against our natural way of thinking. But if we do what the Word of God tells us this morning, is that an alarm, William John? No. It's gone. If we, if we this morning, if we this morning would only learn to follow Scripture, we will not lead defeated lives. Look at James chapter 1, verse 2. James 1 and verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into Devers temptations. I want you to listen to that text this morning. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations. You know, child of God, this morning, here's the first thing the Lord wants us to concentrate on. First of all, this is an attitude we must adopt. Count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. In the original, from the original translation, this is how it reads. Count it all joy when you encounter different trials that come on to the stage in your life. That's the attitude this morning, child of God, we must adopt. Difficult it may seem, but always remember this, the outlook will always determine the outcome. Our attitude to the trial will determine our actions in the trial. Too many of God's people this morning have become victims to the trial rather than victors through the trial. So many of God's people, when they're faced with a trial or perhaps, listen, perhaps maybe with a tragedy, too many believe that it's because of a past wrong or a past sin, and God is punishing them with this tragedy or trial. Do you remember in John's Gospel, chapter 9, you find there a man who was born blind. And you remember the disciples came to the Lord Jesus, and they said to the Lord Jesus, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Do you know, they right away they, 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 they pointed the blame to someone that this man should be born blind. Master, who did sin here, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? They believed that some sin had have, must have taken place that resulted in this man being born blind. And you remember what the Lord Jesus said, you know, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents. You know, child of God, listen, trials come. 
tragedies come to the godliest of people. And in spite of who you are this morning, and in spite of who I am this morning, we should never be taken by surprise when great trials come. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 12, Peter writes, and we'll be looking at this in the Bible class, Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. It's very important, child of God, that we develop a correct attitude in the midst of afflictions and trials. Count it all joy. How do you do that? I'll tell you this, it takes you to lean on God. It's not something that comes automatic to you, I can assure you this, but yet it's an attitude we must adopt. Many saints have been robbed this morning, and perhaps you're one of them, who have been robbed this morning of the blessing that God has for you because you have failed. And I have failed to take this attitude. It's a big ask, child of God, I know it's a big ask, to count it all joy. Is it possible? Well, when we read Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, I think the best way to really consider this is look to the Lord Jesus Himself. We read there, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame. How on earth facing the cross could be joy to the Lord? How could facing Calvary be joy? How could facing the crucifixion be joy? How could facing the agony of the cross be joy to the Savior? How could it be joy that was set before Him? The reason as to why He counted it joy, because first of all, He was fulfilling His Father's will. It was joy that was set before Him because He knew that through the cross, he could save a lost mankind. Listen, child of God, often terrible trials are sent, but they're sent by the hand of God, not by the devil at all, some of them, but by the very hand of God. Do you know when you read James chapter 1 and verse 2, do you know what God wants you and I to do this morning? Do you know what He encourages to do? What He longs for us to do? That we can sing through our struggles. That we can sing through our struggles. Not sorrow through our struggles. Not struggle through our sorrows. But sing through our struggles. My brethren, count it all joy. Let me take you to, to my granny's kitchen. Way back many years ago in my granny's kitchen, there was an old range. And on that old range, there was a kettle. And the kettle was always lipping full. And when that kettle was placed upon the hot plate, in no time at all that kettle began to sing. And the more the water boiled within it, 
the more the water boiled within it, sweeter the kettle sung. And I'll tell you, there's nothing more like a good singing kettle to make a good cup of tea. The more it was boiling inside, the sweeter she whistled and the sweeter she sung. And this is the idea that God, this is the attitude God wants you and I to adopt this morning, that we're able to sing through our struggles. Because I'll tell you this this morning, child of God, nothing takes effect more than those around us when the unsaved can see us and listen to us sing. In the trials of life, Oh, dear child of God this morning, listen, this is an attitude we must adopt. Count it all joy. When ye fall into diverse temptations. Yes, do you think of Paul and Silas? Paul and Silas were locked in prison. Their backs were whipped. They were locked. They were in stocks and everything. And friend, if anybody had room to complain, if anybody had room to moan, and if anybody had room to date, it was Paul and Silas. Ah, but Paul and Silas didn't moan. They didn't groan. They weren't murmuring. They sang. And they sang praises. And you know what the book says? And the prisoners heard them. It must have been the talk of the prison, these pair singing as they're locked and as their backs were red raw. Yesterday morning, no, sorry, Friday morning, big Charlie, we are running. You remember Charlie here, he gave his testimony. And he told me that he was giving his testimony and listening to Glear Baptist tonight, and I give the pastor there his name. He says, Geordie, he calls me Geordie, as you know. He says, Geordie, will you pray for us? Because we farmers are getting it tight, we really are, and they are getting it tight. He says, in fact, Geordie, he says, if things don't get better in another wee while or two, I could lose the farm. I could lose everything. That's what he said. He says, Geordie, you know the size of the farm, and you know the bills that comes in. But he says, no matter how tough things go, he says, I will always seek to pay the bills. And that's one thing I could tell you about Charlie Weir, even before he was saved, he was straight as a day. But you know what he said to me? He says, Geordie, I can tell you now, I'm getting it tight, but I'm still happy as a pig in muck. I'm only telling you what he said. I'm still as happy and as a pig in muck, he says. As a pig in muck. He says, sure, I'm still going to heaven. And he says, the Lord will still not let me starve. And he says, and I've got Jesus. Why should I, he said, let all this rob me of my joy of knowing him? Do you know there's a girl from Ahana Cloy that we know called Pauline? Pauline Marshall shall come here in the summertime with her kids. And Pauline s- suffers a severe amount of pain. She was in a bad, bad, bad car accident a number of years ago. And I know, and Tracy knows the pain she suffers. It's terrible. She still faces amputation yet, but she never lets it get her down. She was in Uganda with us a couple of years ago. And my goodness, bad leg or no bad leg, she was in places where I wouldn't have done to go. But do you see Charlie Weir and Pauline Marshall? That's the attitude they learn to adopt in their trials. That's how they live victoriously victoriously, day by day, in the midst of their trials, and so can we. But secondly, will you take a wee look at verse 3, because there's an acknowledgement we need to accept, an acknowledgement we need to accept. Look at verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Listen, child of God, never you allow 
Never allow yourself this morning to see those trials, to see those troubles working against you. Listen this morning. Look at them working for you. That's what God wants us to see this morning. He doesn't want us to adopt this attitude where we see nothing, only trials working against us. He wants us to see these trials working for us. You know what Paul said in Romans 5, 3, and 4? We glory in tribulations. Also knowing that tribulations worketh patience. Do you know, child of God, no wonder we often sit downhearted. No wonder we sit down discouraged. No wonder at times we feel depressed. No wonder this morning we're so disappointed. Because we feel to see God's purpose in our trials. Knowing this, James says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith… Listen, child of God, if you want to be a man of faith, if you want to be a woman of faith, you have to be ready for your faith to be tried. Do you remember? Do you remember Abraham? Abraham, Hebrews 11 and 7, he says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, I'll tell you, God tried him. It wasn't the devil that tried him. God tried him. And I don't believe God tried another man as more severely as he did Abraham. God came to Abraham's door one day and knocked the door. You, Abraham, yes. You see that wee boy I give you? Yes? Isaac, yes. I want you to take him up Mount Moriah. I want you to slay him, and I want you to put him on the altar for me. I'll tell you, friend, if ever a man's faith was tested and tried, it was Abraham's, wasn't it? And I don't know, I don't know, child of God, God could come knocking on your door this week. And you might find out you could lose some big business deal that you're depending on. And God could come knocking at your door, maybe with a P45, and say, I'm sorry, we don't need you anymore. Sometimes God comes knocking on the door to try your faith and to try my faith. And I'll tell you, my door's been knocked many a time. Knowing this, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, oh, child of God, I can tell you, friend, God will try your faith. Listen this morning, whatever you're going through, whatever you're faced with, listen, learn from this this morning. It's a tool God wants to use to strengthen your faith. Oh, the devil, the devil this morning may, may stoke up the heat in the furnace that God puts you in, but I'll tell you, God knows the temperature that you're able to bear. You see, for all of us, child of God, we forget this. We need to get this into our mind. Our faith needs to be tested, and our faith needs to be tried. But count it all joy when we encounter these different trials, knowing this, that the trial of your faith worketh patience. The attitude we must adopt, child of God, the acknowledgement we must accept. But look at verse 4. There's the achievement we must attain. But let patience have her perfect word. Oh, boys, how many of us fall flat in our mouth in this one? Patience. And I don't want Tracy nodding her head with this one. 
because that's something they could do with. Patience. Let patience have our work. Trials are sent, child of God, to strengthen us, not to shatter us. Trials this morning are sent to bless us in our faith, not to break us in our faith. And child of God, whatever trial it is, whatever testing it is this morning, listen, God knows all about it. And the attitude that He wants you to adopt this morning is counted all joy. It's hard, I know. But this is how we live. This is how we soar above our trials. This is how we can be victorious through our trials. Knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. No wonder James in 5 verse 7 says, Be patient, brethren, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. How many of us are impatient rather than patient? How many of us are agitated more than patient? How many of us this morning are frustrated more than patient? How many of us this morning are intolerant rather than being patient? Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8 says, The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Do you know this morning why so many Christians don't enjoy their Christian life? Do you know this morning why so many of God's people today live a disappointed Christian life because they fail to adopt this attitude? They fail to accept this acknowledgement, and they don't strive to attain this achievement. Look at the next little phrase. It says that ye may be perfect. That's the achievement God wants you and I to attain, that ye may be perfect. Let me read the verse like this. Count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. The whole purpose is that ye may be perfect. The Lord Jesus in Matthew 5 verse 40, it says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. 1 Peter 5 verse 10 says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, listen to this, but after that ye have suffered a way. After that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect. Establish and strengthen you. O oh, child of God, if only we could learn to sing through our struggles. When life seems to turn against us, you remember this, jail of God, if you remember nothing else. If life turns against you, it doesn't mean God has turned against you. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, even when those things seem to have turned against us. Trials are sent that ye may be perfect. Do you remember the, the man in John 9? The Lord Jesus says, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents that he was born blind, 
but that the works of God might be made manifest in him. And every trial that is sent from above has a purpose in it to make us perfect. Count it all joy. That's the attitude we must adopt. Knowing this, that the trial of your faith worketh patience, that's the acknowledgement we must accept. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. Singing through our struggle. By His grace, we can sing the purpose that ye and me may be perfect. May God bless His Word to our hearts this morning. Uh, 599 is our closing hymn. Like a 